Today I'll be showing you how to make a platformer like this. In this game, you could see we could jump, move around, we're not going through walls or anything, we could jump and not go through ceilings, and we have slope detection too, so we can go up slopes. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to make all of these things in less than 10 minutes. Let's get started. Okay, I'm in a new project, and for the first time, I think we can use the scratch cat for our player. Let's rename the sprite to player. And I'm gonna have to size him down a little bit, so let's set the size to something like 60. Now let's go into costumes. I'm going to delete the second costume and duplicate the first. And let's rename this to Hitbox. In our game, we don't want anything like the whiskers or the ears or the tail to get caught on any of the platforms. So we're gonna make a Hitbox that will have all of the collisions. Let's click on the rectangle tool. It doesn't matter any of these fill or outline. Let's draw a rectangle about this size that covers his main body. Then let's click on the select tool and we're gonna delete all of his parts except for the rectangle. So there we go, that's our hitbox. Let's move it to the center, like that, so it lines up. So we just want it right around the middle. Now let's rename the costume one to cat. All right, let's go back into the code. And the first thing we need are two variables. They are going to control the horizontal and vertical position of the cat. So let's name them vertical and horizontal. Now let's make a new block and let's call it move vertical. And let's press add an input and let's type in amount. Then let's click on run without screen refresh. Let's make another one called move horizontal, which is going to do exactly the same thing. So move horizontal, add an input called amount, make sure to run without screen refresh. All right, when the green flag is clicked, let's go to front layer. So we're going to appear in front of the level. Let's also set rotation style to left, right. And let's go to the center of the screen. So go to zero, zero. Now let's set horizontal and let's set vertical to zero. So horizontal and vertical is basically the velocity of the character. Now let's drag out a forever loop, which is going to be our game loop. We're gonna be doing everything in here. So how do we move left and right? Inside of our motion, you'll see change X by 10. If we drag that out and press the green flag, our cat moves to the right. Now, if we want him to move to the left, let's type in minus 10. So he moves to the left now. What about up and down? So change Y by 10, that'll move the cat up. And change Y by minus 10, will move the cat down. So we can use these in our game. If, for this project, I'm going to be using the WAS keys, WASD keys. If you want to, you can use the arrow keys. So if key D pressed, which is going to be our right arrow, let's first face in the right direction. So we know we're facing right. Then let's change our horizontal variable by six. Now let's do the same thing for left arrow. So if left arrow key pressed, or in my case, A, then let's point backwards. And then let's change horizontal by minus six. All right, when we press the green flag, nothing will happen. Let's show the horizontal variable and let's press A, you'll see our cat faces to the left and horizontal changes. Now let's face to the right, you'll see it's changing by a positive number. Let's move down our move horizontal blocks and move vertical blocks. Inside, let's go to motion and drag out change X by 10. Then let's drag out this amount block right here and put it inside of 10. Let's do the same thing for move vertical. Let's change Y by amount. Now to actually see this change on the screen, let's drag out our custom block. I'm going to be putting it above these arrow key pressed. So vertical goes above horizontal. Now let's go to variables and plug in our variables into these slots right here. Now let's try pressing the right arrow. You'll see our character zooms to the left, to the right, and we have complete control over him right now. However, you'll see when I release the arrow keys, the character keeps on moving. We want to add some friction into our game. To do this, let's drag out set horizontal to horizontal times 0.6. So what this does is makes the horizontal keep on slowing back down to zero. Now when we press the green flag, you'll see our character stops when we release the arrow keys. So now that we have a way of controlling our horizontal, 
we need a way of jumping up and down and having gravity. Let's drag out change vertical by minus two. When we press the green flag, you'll see our cat falls down. Now I think it's a great time to start adding our level in so we can start to visualize where all the nooks and crannies are gonna be. Let's paint a new sprite. Let's call this ground. Now, before we start drawing anything, let's go into the code, drag out when green flag clicked, go to X, zero, and Y, zero. Just so our sprite goes to the center of the screen. Back in our costumes, we can start designing our level. So I think I'm going to start drawing our ground. So now I'm gonna draw a wall and you can have fun with this. You can draw whatever you want. Just make sure the cat can fit inside of any of the spaces that you have. Okay, now that we have our level, let's go back to our player sprite. When we press the green flag, you'll see our cat starts off in the center and then it falls through the ground, which we do not want to happen. So how do we detect if we want to stop moving through the ground? Well, since our sprite is named ground, we can use the touching sprite block. Let's drag out if touching ground. So that will detect if we're touching the ground sprite. If we're inside of the ground, we want to move outside of the ground. Let's go to variables and drag out set horizontal and let's change it to vertical to zero. Now we need to detect if we're moving up or down. If we're moving up and we're inside of a block, we want to move back down again to get outside of it. And if we're moving down, we want to move up to get outside of the ground. Let's go to control and drag out if else and let's detect if amount is more than zero. Oops. So if amount is more than zero, then that means we're moving up and we need to move out of the ground. So let's go to control, drag out repeat until not touching ground. So this code will keep on running until we are out of the ground. Let's go to motion and drag out change y by minus one. So this code moves the player down out of the ground. Now, if we're moving down, we want to move up out of the ground. Let's right click on repeat until and duplicate it and let's put it inside of else right here. Instead of minus one, let's change this to one. All right, let's press the green flag. And there we go, you'll see our cat appears on top of the platform. So let's try moving around. You'll see our cat immediately moves up to the top of the ground. But we have no way of controlling our character vertically, such as jumping. So let's add that in now. After we move out of the ground, we can detect if we want to jump. Let's drag out an if then and detect if our up arrow key is pressed. So mine is going to be W since I'm using WASD. If W key is pressed, let's set vertical to some number. Say, let's try 20. All right, now you can see I can jump and I can't hold down W if I'm in the air and fly. You'll also see that I can't go through the top of ceilings like this. Now let's fix a problem where we can go through walls like this. So you'll see we immediately go to the top of a ground and we don't want that. Let's drag our move horizontal block over here to make some space and we're gonna be changing it up a little bit. So the first thing we want to do is if we're inside of a wall, we want to see how far we have to move up to get out of it. Let's go to control and drag out repeat 10. Inside of here, let's change Y by one. Then let's detect if we're not touching the ground. If not touching ground, then let's stop this script. Once we've detected that we can't move out of this wall because it's too high, let's change Y by minus 10 to move back down again. Let's set our horizontal variable to zero. Let's drag out if amount is more than zero then if it is let's repeat until not touching level so this code will keep on running until we move out of the ground so repeat until not touching ground since we're moving right let's move left by using change x by minus one now we can duplicate this block and put it inside our else and instead of minus one, let's do one. All right, let's try testing this out. So I'm moving into a wall. You'll see I can't go into it. Let's move into this wall over here and I can't move into it also. So we're gonna be fixing this bug right here. 
where the cat costume is getting stuck in the wall and moving back up to the top by using our hitbox costume. Let's stop the project and let's find our forever loop. Inside of here, let's go to looks and drag out switch costume to hitbox. We're putting this at the top of our code. Now let's scroll down and drag out switch costume to cats and we're going to be putting this at the bottom of the code. We'll switch costume to the hitbox. The hitbox will do all of the collisions. Then we'll switch back to the cat costume. So anything like the whiskers, the nose, well it doesn't have a nose, the arms or any of that thing sticking out, they won't get caught in any of the levels. And also, if you're moving into a wall and then you move to the right, say, you might be getting transported to the top of your level. If this is happening, let's go into costumes. Let's go to our hitbox costume and we need to center our hitbox costume in the exact center. So let's click on the select tool and move our hitbox onto this crosshair and then snap it onto it. Let's try running our game. You'll see that we can move up slopes, we can collide with ceilings, we can do all sorts of things like moving around, jumping, and we can have a lot of fun with this like making different levels, different costumes for a cat, and I made a free coding course for beginners where you can learn the basics of game design and go from beginner to professional. I compiled everything I learned from my degree in game design to my hundreds of published video games into one singular course. If you want to become a game developer or sharpen your skills, check it out here.